Right, I'm halfway through getting the ME221 standalone ECU into this car and the next thing on the to-do list is to install my AEM, AFR gauge and the wideband sensor as well. Now I'm going to be all over the car getting this thing installed, underneath it, in the engine bay, in the interior, should be fun. Let's get started. Right, there's three parts to this install. First up is the wideband sensor itself. Now this is going to go in place of the factory O2 narrowband sensor which is screwed into the exhaust pipe before the catalytic converter. Now once I've sorted that out I can move on to installing the AEM AFR gauge itself. Now this is going to go in the dash inside the car and if you saw episode 5 in this series you'll know exactly where it's going. In the panel that I installed in the centre console. But that's not before I've sorted out all the wiring that comes with it. So, battery's already disconnected because I'm halfway through installing the ECU and the first job I think I'm going to tackle is getting the wideband sensor into the exhaust pipe, which means I've got to jack the car up and crawl underneath. Okay, so here is our factory O2 sensor screwed into the exhaust pipe here, and this is what's known as a narrowband sensor. And its only real function is at cruise and idle, where it targets a very specific air to fuel ratio, or AFR, of between 14 to 1 and 15 to 1. This keeps the engine running efficiently during these conditions, and it does its job very well. Outside of these conditions, however, it is completely useless. So enter our wideband sensor that we're going to replace it with. And this is able to detect a much wider range of AFRs, anything from 9 to 1 to 18 to 1. 9 to 1 being extremely rich, 18 to 1 being extremely lean. Now this makes it a much more powerful tool when it comes to tuning a modified engine and used in conjunction with a standalone ECU like the ME221 that I'm halfway through installing here makes for a very powerful bit of kit. So enough waffle, let's get this old O2 sensor out and replace it with our wideband sensor and quick because my neck aches. Oh. Right, it's a 22 mil. Access is a little tight, but we should be able to get this out. There we go, that's the old O2 sensor out. And now I can replace it with the wideband. Watch it here. Should be a direct replacement, he says. Okay, nip it up. Right, cool, that's the new wideband sensor installed and nipped up. Now I'm going to go up into the engine bay and finish removing this old O2 sensor and get this new one plugged in. So the old O2 sensor plugs right into the stock harness here on top of the valve cover, so I need to disconnect this. Like that. Remove the plug. Like that, oh there's another clip back here. There we go, now the sensor should just lift out. And there we go, that's the old O2 sensor removed. Now I'm not going to throw this away just yet because I'm going to reuse some of this wiring harness here to plumb the wideband sensor back into the stock harness. Speaking of which, let's make a start on that. Right, so there's two looms coming from the rear of this AEM gauge here. The first of these ends in a six pin connector. Now this needs threading through into the engine bay, through the bulkhead, and will plug directly into our freshly installed wideband sensor. So I'm gonna use the same grommet that I've used for the map line, push that through there, plug it in, and job done for that. That's the easy part. The next loom coming from the rear of this gauge ends in this these seven tails. Now thankfully after reading the instructions I only need to use four of these and these are as follows. So the red wire, this needs hooking up to a 12 volt switched live and this is the power for the gauge. And now the black wire, this is the ground for the gauge and this needs to go to a good ground location to the body or the chassis of the vehicle. Then we've got the white wire, this is the wideband signal output, so this needs to go to the ECU. And finally, the brown wire, this is the ground for the signal. So here's the plan, I'm going to use the stock O2 connector for two of these wires, those being the wideband signal output and the signal 
ground. So I've cut the plug off the stock O2 sensor and here's a close up of it. So this pin will send the signal to the ECU much in the same way as the stock O2 sensor did. So I can hook the white wire from the gauge up to that. And then this pin is the signal ground. So the brown wire can go to that. So all I need to do is crimp these wires up to the stock plug in the correct order, which by my workings is the white wire from the gauge to the blue wire at the plug and the brown wire from the gauge to the white wire at the plug and then insulate everything up including the two wires I'm not using the two black wires these were for the O2 sensor heater which we don't need anymore and then just plug it back in to the stock harness so to recap that is the wideband signal output and the signal ground wired to the stock harness using the original O2 plug and those wires are running back into the cabin here through the same grommet as everything else cool that is two wires down, two to go. And those being the switch 12 volt live for the gauge and it's ground. So for the live, I'm gonna splice into the live for the cigarette lighter as it's reasonably close to the gauge and should provide a solid 12 volt supply. And I'm also gonna wire in an inline five amp fuse as well as per the gauge instruction. So I'm gonna splice into that, run the wire up the back of the dash and then crimp it to the red wire from the gauge. And that should be our switch live taken care of and then finally is the black wire the gauge ground and I'm going to go back into the engine bay for this and use the same ground location as the engine itself so I've pushed that through into the engine bay through the same grommet as everything else crimped an o-ring onto the end of it and bolted it down in there so that should provide a good solid ground location and that's it that is the wiring side of things taken care of Right now all I need to do is install this gauge into the dash here and I'm hoping this is going to be the easiest part of the install. So remove the panel that I installed, like that, push the gauge into it, make sure it looks straight. Then use the supplied bracket and fasteners to secure it in there. solid. Now I can plug the wires back into it. The plugs are different so you don't have to worry about getting them the wrong way around. Right that's both wires plugged in. Now I can push this panel back into the dash. And there you have it. That's the AEM AFR gauge and wideband sensor installed. Now this should give me an accurate reading of the engine AFRs during all operating conditions, which is great for just generally keeping an eye on the engine, making sure it's not running excessively rich or excessively lean, but it's especially useful if you are planning to boost a car, which is exactly what I have planned for this thing. Now, one final thing you should probably do if you are running a standalone ECU like the ME221 that I'm partway through installing here is calibrate the sensor within the ECU software so you know it's getting an accurate reading. Now, this I'm gonna be going over in part two of my ECU install. So feel free to check that out if you wish. If not, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, I'm gonna be covering this entire supercharge build right here on YouTube with a comprehensive list of expenses to go with it as well. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks, see you for the next episode.